Welcome back to Jack of All Trades 505. I'm your host, Joseph. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this, if you're returning, welcome back. Uh, this was a uh, fun little project, uh, kind of impromptu. I just uh, got tired of looking at uh, the messed up paint job that I had done on my water bottle. Um, I had done a uh, Harley-Davidson... Uh, graphics uh, that I attempted to um, lay down vinyl lettering graphics and uh, do multi-layers, uh, some old school flame licks. And uh, when I went to go lift the, uh, the stencils, the, uh, the paint or the flame lick, um, basically the paint was coming up with it. So, um, I don't know what I did. I didn't either give it long enough to dry. I didn't have any 4030 or 4050, uh, intercoat clear or the UVLS clear to spray in between laying down my graphics and, uh, laying, you know, my first layer and, and each subsequent layer, uh, because I was doing multiple colors. I was doing three different colors, uh, laid on top of each other. So anyway, um, that one looked pretty bad. So I decided to go ahead and, uh, repaint it. Um, I did go ahead and paint this, uh, bottle, uh, sanded it down 120 grit, uh, then 320 grit. <clears throat> then I, uh, sprayed it with Autoborn sealer, uh, sanded it down uh with the 600 wet uh then i sprayed it with the base coat createx pearl wicked pearl black uh and just a wicked detail white uh, to lay down the graphics uh here in the uh in the video you will see that uh, i had cut out the background and freehanded in the sun rays with the clouds inside of them. Uh, I did use white to create the highlights. Then I took uh, the lemon yellow or uh, just bright yellow illustration colors to kind of bump up the accents, uh, the whitest part of the uh, clouds. Then I went in uh, with a, another airbrush, the G44 and um, sprayed burnt sienna to get the goldish color, orangey color uh, to the clouds. And that is the only color that we're adding, uh, a little bit of color to the background. Uh, there will be some color in her necklace and in the crown on her head. Uh, other than that, everything else is gonna be black and white. So for the remainder of this airbrush, uh, airbrushing, um, I did go ahead and uh, I used the only airbrush that I used on this um, painting, uh, aside from the Grex to lay down the, the base coat, was the Creos PS270. Uh, this is a 0.2 millimeter airbrush. Um, I have two of them, so I used uh, one for black, one for white. Uh, again, I like to use multiple airbrushes uh, when I airbrush. One for each color. It uh, doesn't matter how many colors I'm using. Uh, I have up to 14 airbrushes available um, sitting right in front of me. So I will load all 14 of them up if I need it. I'd rather have the color already mixed, ready to go, ready to spray in the airbrush rather than constantly mixing, uh, cleaning out an airbrush and mixing it and everything else. That's why I think uh, most artists uh, waste a lot of time. Uh, plus if I go over an area and I ruin it or I need to go back in and retouch an area with a color, I'm not having to clean out the airbrush and revisit that area. So that's why I do that. But, uh, anyway, here, uh, again, we, I just, uh, I did cut out, uh, different elements of the background wherever I seen a natural border, uh, some of the edge, uh, uh, the edge of the temple itself, uh, there are some stony uh, steps uh, that uh, were fleshed out, then uh, cut away the background uh, to expose more of the temple itself using natural, or not natural edges, um, 
cut out uh, st stencils that uh, that I created in the uh, created in the Cricut. So that way I could get these sharp edges. Uh, again, this is semi freehand, semi uh, stenciled, I guess, uh, paper masked. Uh, again, that's uh, to really pull off an effective uh, airbrushing. You want to have a, a good balance uh, between um, freehand and uh, stencil work. So try to keep that in mind. Uh, if you have an edge that looks too sharp, try to blend off of that edge. Try to add some texture to it. Uh, soften up the line a little with some freehand. Uh, because when you look at nature and you look at other things, your eyes tend to focus uh, on certain aspects while other aspects are still blurry. And uh, again, that's what makes a, a photo believable or an image believable. And even though this is very much illustrative in its style, uh, you still want to try to make the image as believable as possible. Uh, anatomy, tone, shading, everything. You want to make sure that uh, things are in the right place, that the anatomy is right, so that the shading is good, that uh, the light source is correct, that uh, you have those textures. Because the, the more that you can relay that, the, the better the, the art is going to look. Um, I've always felt that uh, the reason that photorealism has appealed to me so much was that um, for me, the ultimate display of artistry is your ability to see the details in uh, the subject you know, of whatever you are painting and being able to reproduce those with the human hand, uh, not with a machine, not with a photograph, not with anything else, but uh, with your hand. Now, yes, I do realize that uh, there are, that I'm using printouts and paper cutouts and things that I created with stencil machines and everything else to create this image. But uh, they're just tools. Again, I'm, you know, I'm not a purist. I'm not uh, one of these people that believe that uh, unless you use only the airbrush, uh, then you have not truly created an airbrushing. I don't know what it is you're supposed to have created, but uh, again, there is a school of thought out there that uh, unless you use only the airbrush and nothing but the airbrush that you have somehow cheated or that it's somehow not an airbrush. But anyway, um, again, when, uh, when you look at this image, you will notice that I am working my way from the background uh, the farthest elements forward. So the clouds in the back, then the temple. Then we moved on to her arm, uh, her left arm, uh, the club in her hand. And uh, we started, uh, I started to cut away and plan for certain areas, like cutting away the belly area uh, from the hips. And again, uh, when I choose these areas to cut, I'm looking for natural borders, okay, in the image. Uh, the cleavage creates a border, the necklace creates a border, the bottom of the chin creates a border, the top of, the, of her loincloth creates a border. Uh, so each of these will, will create natural edges or borders that I will look for and use to my advantage uh, so that uh, but everything else inside those cutaways inside the the area that i have exposed uh to the of the substrate of the surface uh that you're pretty much free handing in there it's not like a traditional stencil that you would uh you would have a cutaway you would just blast in paint and then you'd move on to the next color and blast in solid color. You have to use shading. You have to use a light touch when using this type of method. Uh, because I do try to preserve the background, which is black, for the, for the darker tones. And I'm really just using lighter layers of white to bring out the highlights and to bring that tonal value, but I will try to preserve as much of the dark layers 
of the background of the underneath layer to act as the shadows uh, so I don't have to lay in additional paint because um, you will uh, you may or may not notice in the video but when the when the light hits that black pearl it does shimmer and it does give a really cool effect especially in the sun when this uh, when this project is was clear coated uh, I did go ahead and clear coat this uh, off camera afterwards and uh, out in the sun the black pearl shimmers and because I didn't completely black out or cover uh, the black and I used it for those mid-tones um, some of that sparkle actually shines through in the shadow areas which actually looks really cool in the final effect it was not something i was necessarily anticipating but it is a secondary uh as as bob ross would call it happy accident uh so um yeah that's just something to to keep in mind especially uh, if you're going to do something like this uh, i did do another water bottle similar to this i used a white pearl base and only sprayed black for the darkest areas and left the white pearl for the highlights and that again in the sunlight left a very cool shimmer um, that i had not intended specifically that was not the look i was going for but it was an uh, an unintentional side effect so uh but now that i do realize uh how that kind of looks and that um that appeal of that i'm probably going to do that more often uh with the pearls so i do like uh i did like that that effect um you will notice uh, it with throughout this video, though, that uh, it seems like I go a lot of back and forth of uh, spraying an area and then going back, spraying an area, going back. Um, I, I will say that this was probably due to the fact that I haven't actually painted with opaque paints in, in a while. Um, I have been painting uh, almost exclusively in transparent paints. And um, I just didn't thin out the paint enough. Uh, as I worked, I kept adding more and more reducer until finally it started to flow uh, well for me. And I was uh, happy with it. But you will notice that many times it seems like I spray too much. And then I'm having to go back into an area and, and it's just I was struggling. And that was not the airbrush's fault. That was my fault for my paint mixture. Um, honestly, uh, you do need to just, that is usually going to be your, your, the key to success or failure is your paint mixture. If it's uh, too watery, you're going to get spidering. It's going to run. It's, uh, you're, it's going to take forever to build up the, the opacity or the coverage that you're looking for. If it's too thick, you're going to get buttering splatters uh, it's not going to be smooth you're going to have some controllability issues so again it's all a balancing act as you're painting you have to have a feel for it um, uh, this, and the same thing with the air pressure uh, again there's no real set air pressure uh, i airbrush my uh, regulator is set at 45 psi uh, now, whether that's what I'm actually airbrushing at, I cannot tell you because uh, I do have a Mac valve at the collar uh, at the Quick Connect and I have uh, a Mac valve on most of my airbrushes. So um, I may adjust that up or down as I need. Uh, but uh, again, uh, like I said in some of my other videos, I feel that uh, the paint seems to come off of the needle quicker and cleaner with a higher airspeed. That when you slow down the air pressure, when you put it down to 18, 20 PSI, uh, for me, just the way that I paint, again, this may be different for everybody else, but for me, I feel that the paint comes out more speckled and not as controlled as when it's coming out at higher pressures. The way I control its spattering and it's where it's laying is my trigger control. Just learning how to lay down the smallest amount of paint 
possible. Uh, and really, that's just my trick. Uh, that's my technique. Again, I don't know about anybody else. Uh, you know, other people, they, I've, all I've heard is 18, 20 PSI. Uh, like I say, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, run my mach I run my airbrushes at 45 PSI. Uh, and I only slow it down if I want softer coverage, just like in tattooing. In, uh, we run our tattoo machines at higher speeds for line work and slower speeds for shading. And uh, same thing, if I want a softer shade uh, or I want more speckling, I want it more grainy, I will slow down the air pressure and use that kind of speckled effect. But for the most part, I, I pretty much keep my airbrushes wide open and use trigger control to, to control it. Now again, um, this may be completely wrong in the face of all conventional theory. I don't know. I haven't been doing it long enough to know if I'm doing it right or not. Uh, I am self-taught. Uh, I have taken some uh, correspondence courses that have taught me quite a bit. Uh, thank you, Drew Blair, for, for those uh, classes. I've learned so much from those. Um, and uh, YouTube. Other than that, uh, I've never taken a formal class. I have no teachings. Uh, everything I know, I learned just on my own. And uh, yeah, that's uh, like I said. What can I what can I say other than that? Uh, if you want to learn, the information's out there. You can learn and uh, you can find this information out. Uh, you just have to practice. Uh, you have to, uh, you know. And and one thing I will say is that I don't just watch airbrushing videos. I watch other painting videos. I watch drawing videos. I watch. Uh, watercolor painting videos. I watch pastel painting videos, uh, pencil drawings. Uh, I'm constantly uh, looking to expand my artistic knowledge base uh, to all different mediums and disciplines. Uh, I never try to stop learning at all. And all the information I learn uh, affects everything else. Uh, you will be surprised how much um, charcoal drawing can affect the way that you paint uh, with the airbrush if you're using um, illustration paints that are erasable. Uh, it's very much like a, a charcoal or a pastel artist. Uh, they use uh, different types of erasers and, and uh, um, uh, layering techniques uh, with when drawing uh, so and and you can do that with the airbrush uh, it's just uh, the way that you you approach it um, this is a, an approach in opaques rather than transparent so you lay it down um, again uh, when you lay down a light color over dark color uh, you can get a color shift and so what I do to combat that is uh, if I do notice a color shift, I try to as lightly as possible spray over the area that has shifted blue and just try to bring that back to a, to more of a grayish uh, tone. There still may be somewhat of a, a bluish hint, but again, sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, here you'll just notice I just had a big... Uh, faux pas uh, <laughs> uh, problem a uh, constant back and forth constant trying to balance get these eyes just right where they're not too heavy they're not too crazy uh, again i was trying to deal with this this paint mixture of uh, getting it to the right balance and uh, there i was a little too overzealous pulled back on the trigger and <laughs> got a big splat of paint and I had to try to fix it. And you see there, just went over it with some burnt sienna, a little bit uh, more, some black, kind of covered some of those spots. And here I'm just going in, uh, back into the face, re-emphasize shadows, lights, darks. Uh, again, this face is only about maybe an inch, inch and a quarter tall. So it's kind of hard to really get detail that small, especially if you're not using a Micron. Um, but these airbrushes do, uh, you know, do a fair job. Uh, again, like I said, I was, um, if I would have used some of my other airbrushes, I may have, you know, done a slightly better job. Um, but I was mainly trying to test uh 
the capable, the fully test the capabilities of this particular airbrush. Uh, just like all of my other airbrushes, I have done one project completely from start to finish with that airbrush uh, and that airbrush alone. Uh, and this was the PS 270s turn. So, uh, and well, I guess, like I said, it, it, it is, I did use the Grex for the background, but uh, that's the background's background. That's, that's, I would have used my, um, uh, I have a 0.6 touch up, uh, spray gun that, uh, fan cap that I could have used to spray the background. Um, but my Grex is the Swiss army knife of airbrushes. Uh, I can put the round, uh, air cap on it. I can put the fan cap on it. Uh, I can spray the base coat, the sealer, the base coat, the uh, 2K clear, everything with that airbrush. Uh, so honestly, that airbrush is worth the money. Uh, I, I tend to think most airbrushes are overpriced, uh, honestly, because considering what you can do with $25, $30 airbrushes, yeah, $250, $300, $500, yeah, that's... It just seems crazy, but, um, I don't know, $200 for that Grex airbrush. Uh, it does come out a lot more though. When you add the, what, 65, $70 for the conversion, I added, uh, this handle to it. Uh, it's ergonomic grip from Grex and yeah, it, uh, like I say, the all in all into that airbrush, it's almost $300. So it, it does work out a little bit more, but it doesn't require full on air compressor. Um, I have a two gallon air compressor that I run it off of. And this, and like I said, I was able to paint this entire uh, airbrush, this entire bottle with, the, with that airbrush, um, base, sealer, and clear coat. 2k clear um speedo coat uh fast 2k urethane clear is what i used to clear this um yeah i don't uh i don't know i've tried to use the createx clear um uh, 40 50 clear that stuff is so thick even reduced at what they consider 10 percent. i've yet to get a good clear uh laid down using the their clear i'm sorry uh like i said i really like your guys's paint but uh, your clears i don't know uh, it just boggles my mind it looks so thick and just i don't see how that's supposed to pass through an airbrush uh even reduced at 10 percent uh and then if i reduce it any more than that uh, i sprayed it over an artwork and it destroyed my artwork i had to completely redo it so yeah, that, uh, I don't know if I'll be trying any more UVLS clear on any of my work. I'll just use this automotive clear if I need to clear it. But anyway, um, the one thing I will say, uh, is that I did notice that, uh, for the shadows and for the detail work, I used a, the regular wicked black, um, jet black and uh so when you look at it in the light in those areas that i was spraying in shadow it doesn't reflect like the black pearl and um luckily where i sprayed it worked out it works with the image but it could have gotten away from me very very quickly uh, if I had gone too crazy with it and it could have muddied up the image. So what I would say, what I would do different next time is that I would have um, kept some of the base in a separate airbrush to use for those touch-ups, for the little mistakes and things that I mess up. But uh, anyway, this was the painting. And... Uh, yeah, it was fun and uh, came out pretty good. I was happy with it. Um, unfortunately, the pictures don't quite capture uh, the the full-on uh, magnitude of the 
of the airbrushing itself, but uh, I did include a, a short clip here at the end uh, in real time uh, under the lights just to kind of show you what that, uh, what that looks like. I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope it helps you out with your artwork and I hope that you would please like uh, if you haven't already done so subscribe and uh, please join me in the next one. Please leave a, a, a comment if there's anything that you would like to see maybe a, a project or if there's any tips or suggestions I would love to hear them. Thanks a lot and have a great day.